See, wisdom is seeing a problem in the future and heading it off now so that the problem never materializes. But if you refuse to walk in wisdom, then your problem is going to materialize. And you're going to be in the middle of a crisis, and then you're going to have to call on somebody else that is walking in wisdom to get you out of the crisis. Many people actually, now notice the, the, the progression here. Many people first question why God doesn't do something to help them. Second progression, many people actually blame God for not helping them in their situation. Okay? Now, third level of spiritual idiocy. Okay? Many people actually blame God for causing their problem. God is not the cause of your problem. Most of our problems are self-inflicted. Yeah. Right? And the bad part is when we self-inflict, the devil's right there to give us a hand yeah. and to move in and then tell us, oh, God, God did this when it was the devil the whole time. Yeah, it was. One of the main characteristics of the Pharisees was that they always blamed Jesus for what they were doing. You ever notice that? That's still the mark of a Pharisee. Now, he says here, or I say here because I wrote this, this part. God said that he would fulfill the length of our days, but you must choose life. You must learn to bind and loose. Okay? You must decide to actually do the word every day in every situation. But it's, there's times that it's kind of hard to remember sometimes whenever the problem hits. Why? Because you're looking at the things that are seen, the problems, rather than looking at the things which are not seen, which is the promises. There is not a problem you will face ever in your life that there is not a promise that covers it. What does that mean? That means that if we have extra time or any time or make time, this is where your help comes from. Amen. Years ago, I was in a little bitty church just north of here up in Van Austin. And the pastor there, uh, he wasn't my first pastor, but he was a good pastor. And he let me preach from time to time. And we were in the congregation, as, just as a member of the congregation. And there was a, um, a woman there that was a prophetess. And it's amazing, too. God can put a prophet or a prophetess or an apostle or whatever else in the smallest congregations. He didn't always send them to the mega churches. Why? Because many times their voices would be lost. But many times he'll have them in a small, obscure, out-of-the-way place that you'd have to turn aside to go hear the voice of God. And so we were at this little church, and this woman... I'll tell you who she was. Her name, and I, I don't know anything about her anymore. Don't know where she's at. But her name is Pat Duty, D-O-O-T-Y, Pat Duty. Uh, awesome woman of God. And we were there one night, and I was in my early 20s, I guess. Yeah, it had to be early, to, yeah, early mid-20s, I guess, somewhere to there. And she came up, and we, were, we had all kinds of, you know, needs. And... We were just gritting our teeth and trusting God and just trying to walk on through all the problems and the lack and all that kind of stuff. And one night in a Wednesday night service, because if the door was open, we were there. And on a Wednesday night service, she came and we were sitting there and she was, uh, they had finished preaching and then she wasn't preaching that night, but she got up, there was ministry, body ministry. And so she came and stood right in front of me and my wife was there and my kids were there. And she said, the Lord says, one thing is needful. And I just broke and started crying. Why? Because I had just read the scripture where Martha comes in complaining to Jesus about Mary, how she won't help, and all she does is sit there and listen to Jesus' words. And Jesus said, Martha, you're much encumbered with a lot of stuff, but only one thing is needful. And Mary has chosen that one thing. And that one thing was the word of God. And we had so many needs that every time I got my face out of the book, there was all the stuff. The only way I could keep from looking 
at the seen was to keep the unseen in front of my face. And it was not easy. I had a mother-in-law that loved her daughter. She put up with me, but she loved her daughter. And, and, I, and I get that. I understand that. But she, along with several others, were your heads in the clouds, you know, get real. Uh, she was a Jehovah's Witness at the time. And so all of this was going on. And that's what I was hearing from every angle. But all I knew is this is the only thing. I said, this is the only physical contact I have with God. This is it. There is no other physical contact you can have with God other than this word. So this word is the passage into the spirit realm, and it brings you to Jesus. And when you get in him, you get in the spirit realm. But this is what you have to go back to this. Why? You know why? This don't change every week. Emotions change every day. But this stays the same. So you've got to get in this, believe this, read it, speak it, say it. This has to be the word of your testimony. Why? Because these are the promises. And that by these precious promises, we become partakers of his divine nature. So as we look at these precious promises and we say, that right there, it, it, it don't, this out here doesn't look like this. But this is true. And I believe this. And because of God, you said this, so this shall happen. Amen. This is the way it is in the spirit, and it's the way it will be in my life. And when you do that, now you lock into that, and things that you see will start to change. Yes. 